So the project I'm here to talk about today is uh, called Exchange Library. Um, it's a part of a larger artistic research-based project called Trade Test Site that was started in 2015 by the artist Lise, who I'm working on partnering up with um, for this Exchange Library project. And uh, the, this big, huge project is uh, operating in three different ways. There's the exchange library, which is the, a physical swap shop. Um, it's got a printing uh, part of it, where these, it's an inter international uh, collaborative project with artists and scholars and all types of people getting together and uh, publishing their own uh, musings on envisioning, envisioning new alternative, better um, economic systems that are more sustainable. And then there's a public program, which are uh, workshops, symposiums, uh, conferences, and all kinds of things where we invite the public in. Um, so uh, uh, the Exchange Library is a barter store. Um, we are based in Rome Sexopel, which is an artist-driven uh, project and exhibition space. Uh, because it started as an artistic project since Lise is an artist and it uh, also is fueled by her frustration in this economic system of uh, yeah, not being artists not being paid what they're actually worth, um, what their work is actually worth. So, uh, and then she tried to lay down a plan for how could we make a, 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 a new economic system revolving around these trade and labor and um, yeah, maybe avoiding money as much as we can. And what you see here is our uh, original shop display. We've changed it now. Uh, but um, one of the things that we do, we have this physical platform where we uh, put food production machines at people's disposal. Um, so we have apple press, a flour mill, a butter churner, uh, meat grinders, um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, trying to empower people to produce more themselves and we also teach them do open workshops for free uh, and teach people how to use these machines, how to ferment, how to produce more at home uh, and how easily it can be done and how much healthier and cheaper it actually is to do it. Uh, we focus a lot on fermentation. Uh, we are really crazy about all the healthy probiotic benefits of yeah, bacteria and they're amazing cooks, I would like to say. <laughs> they do everything. I mean, they're in our wines, our sausages, our cheeses, uh, fermented foods, of course, uh, in extremely well-tasting uh, drinks like kombucha and kefir. So they're all over the place. And um, so the thing, one other thing is about taking back the power. Um, the project is overall about taking back the power from this oppressive capitalistic system. And one of the ways to do that is to produce more yourself. Uh, if you buy fermented foods from the supermarket, you don't get the same nutritional value out of them because they have been pasteurized, so all the good bacteria is dead. So it's basically dead food. So that's why we focus a lot on fermentation. On the left um, is the, one of the shelves we have with some fermented foods that we do ourselves. There's a ginger beer, amongst other things, of course, sauerkraut, and then fermented chilies and all kinds of good stuff. So people can come into the store and barter something for a fermented foods. Um, and on the right, there is a, an exhibition display uh, that Lisa presented recently at an exhibition in Bergen. Um, and the booklets are displayed here on the book, on the, sh on the table. And you can uh, have a look, and if there's still any left, I think you can take some of them with you. Um, and they explain, they explain really nicely um, the theoretical musings, starting from Gibbs and Graham, if you know the two feminist economists, uh, talking about alternative economies and other projects that are like ours and that we are inspired from by. Um, Exchange library in a Danish context, and that confuses people a lot. It's two 
too abstract. Uh, so it just prevented people from coming in because they didn't quite understand what it is with the exchange library and the machines. And that. So now we uh, put displayed the fermented foods in the window, hoping that people will get it, that they can get that in the shop. It's a test that we're running. Um, we found that we wrote the free workshops on the display on the window and people, that's our best form of marketing ever. We just hit a cold gold mine with that one because so many people walk by and they're really intrigued and the first one is also called Cooking with Bacteria which is counterintuitive but people just loved it anyways and we had a huge turnout. Uh, so we're trying different systems. Uh, we started out as a, um, maybe I should wait for that. Yeah, so it's a shop, a barter shop where you can trade stuff, but it's also a cafe where we, uh, if we have baked goods or homemade marmalade, then we can serve that in the cafe. We also have a super nice cappuccino machine. And then uh, we started a time banking, trying and testing that out to see how that works, uh, and calculated that uh, according to one hour uh, wage in Denmark, minimum wage or average minimum wage, um, compared to a, how much a cup of coffee costs in the Latin Quarter, where we are based, uh, it would amount to about 12 minutes of your time. So you can come in and have a free cup of coffee and donate 12 minutes of your time, and you donate them according to your own interests, skills, and yeah, what we figure out together. Um, yeah, so the thing about this shop is that the com conversation is totally different. Just, uh, there's a barrier, that just uh, falls down in the moment that you don't expect people to pay for anything. So all of a sudden we have really meaningful and deep conversations about values within seconds. Something mm -hmm. that you don't have in the supermarket. So we like that a lot. Um, yeah, and this is my only small doodle that I made. Um, because the idea... So it's an ecosystem in a way. I, I started... The revolution starts in the house, in the home, by producing your own food. It's healthier, it's cheaper. A healthier, balanced gut flora, bacteria flora, will also balance your mind automatically, so you can think more clearly. Then this inevitably creates um, a community, and we also already have about five, six people uh, engaged actively in Exchange Library and helping it grow in different ways. Naomi is a part of that. Uh, so this will create a community and this community will then ho help overturn the balance from not letting the money decide what the value of an object or a food item is, but letting the value be the center of attention. And then this goes on to create a larger community based around this thing. And we, in our workshops, it's very participatory. So it's not, we don't present like, this is how you make kombucha, this is how you ferment, it's hands-on people come in and get their uh, fingers in the dough and take their own uh, produced stuff home with them. So yeah, it's already working and it's growing slowly. Um, so yeah, what I wanted to say, we started out uh, as a membership-based uh, community. So we wanted to, we said five euros a month and then you can come and exchange however you want to take the food production machines home with you and borrow them or use them in the shop or have as much coffee as you want or, um, yeah. But then it turned out that uh, it's a little bit too much commitment for people, so it didn't work out that well. So now we're just scrapping that all together and saying, okay, let's try something else. And since we're so crazy about this uh, bacteria stuff, uh, <laughs> We're uh, going to start a uh, kombucha and kefir bar in spring, which is on the left you see the kefir grains. These are grains of bacteria, cultures of bacteria that you feed with water and sugar, and then they produce this fizzy, really, really nice probiotic healthy drink. And the kombucha is almost the same. This is the kombucha sponge. They're really round and beautiful. It's also a scobia bacteria culture uh, and yeast culture. And you feed it with green tea and sugar water, and then it gives you this amazing drink. Mm -hmm. So, and then, yeah, we're going to try out a donation base. Because it's really, I mean, it's difficult. How do you take money in a moneyless store? It's, uh, but on the other hand, I think my personal approach to everyday activism, or, I mean, all these things we've been talking about, um, 
uh, is that capitalism is this, I have this image of this big wheel that just keeps, this big machinery turns and it's unstoppable. But then you can hatch on your little wheel, your little project onto that and then flow some of that energy and capital into your own project and then out of that grow something that is sustainable with capitalistic means. So I, I don't necessarily think that we have to altogether overthrow the whole system in order for it to work, but it's really tricky. It's really tricky and it's really... Um, yeah, so I think that's what I have.
you get there's a, a picture that comes up of a pretty veg a pretty fruit or a pretty vegetable <laughs> and a little uh, fruit facts or fruit vegetable fact. I looked up all kinds of fun uh, information about pineapples and and raspberries. I wanted I thought maybe we could get people to appreciate food more by appreciating how fascinating biology is. Uh, so uh, and I, I could go. Uh, I have a friend. I have a biologist friend here in Aarhus who's got really excited about this. So I think I, she could. She would delve into this more with me if I wanted to. So it's very simple. It's not a very complicated app. It's a very basic sharing app, and it is open source. So if you have a project in the place that you're at, and you wanted to take this software and redevelop it for your uses in the place where you are, or if you have a friend somewhere else, it could be repurposed. It would be nice for salary to take it back to Copenhagen. <laughs> yeah, you can take this specifically, this app specifically back to Copenhagen, or maybe Francois, I'll go to Copenhagen and introduce it to featuring uh, Copenhagen in the next in the next few months. But uh, but it could also be redeveloped for people in the Czech Republic in in Czech, or it could be taken to uh, South Africa and redeveloped for a different purpose uh, there. Thank you. 